We love talking about music on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. Episode number 421 is with Katie Ray from NBC's The Voice. Hello. Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so what, what's going on in your world these days where, it, it, I mean, you know, the lights, the cameras, the action. But, but when you step <laughs> away from all of that, what's happening in your world? Oh, I'm just back to being a mom, you know, um, <laughs> playing, playing with toys, playing with Sam, running around, you know, chasing, <laughs> wrestling my little dude. He's, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing, nothing different from what, what I left before. So <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't that amazing though, that you, that you can step right into that role. And I don't even want to call it a role. It's, it's, it's almost like a calling. You are here because. Mm hmm. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. What was that? In other words, it's it's like when when you when you step back into that in, into into that place of where you were as a, as a mom and stuff like that. Because I mean, one mm-hmm. of the things that I've learned and studying Native American spirituality is what we do today affects the next seven generations. It's the same thing mm-hmm. with you. I'm sorry, you keep cutting out. I can barely hear that last thing. <laughs> in other words, I love the fact that you're being a mom. That is so cool. That, yeah. that you're so rooted in being a mom. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. I that's the that's the most important role that I have, you know. Um he's he's my everything and I just want to um you know, give him the best life possible. So I really appreciate that cuz um that is like, you know, like you said, one of one of the biggest things in life is that we raise good people, and that's what I want to do. I want to I want to raise a good kid and bring um, bring some, you know, light to the world in this negative world we live in. Isn't that the truth? Are 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 you, are you yeah. writing any of this down in a journal? Because one day your your son is going <laughs> to have a family of his own, as you say. You're not going to believe what happened to my mom. I am. Yeah, definitely. It's been uh, journaling has been a, a huge. Um, help actually throughout this whole process because it's been a lot um you know we've had lots of busy days being away from my family was probably one of the hardest things ever for me um you know i've only been away from my son for like three days up before i left for la so um that was like the longest time i've been away so you know journaling has definitely been helpful and yeah i'm I'm glad that um, i have that for him so be really cool you you sang no more tears from barbara streisand and donna summer my god that <laughs> yeah. that song when it came out on the radio when i was a kid it was like oh my god and you guys brought that same feeling back thank you yeah i mean the fact that she gave us that song was honestly like I just can't believe that she trusted us with a song like that, of that magnitude. And so we just like, we knew that we had to get in there and just work really, really hard to make her proud. And I feel like we did. So um, just really excited that I got to sing that song. Um, and now it's in my, my repertoire and um yeah, I'm I'm very very excited about that. To yeah, create to create song. with somebody like Ariana Grande and stuff like that because her music is everywhere, she's traveled everywhere, but yet on the mm-hmm. show I feel like she's that girl next door. She is. I mean, it's it it's not a, a joke. I mean, they're not like they're not editing it to be that way. She is so so cool, so humble. Um, just really down to earth. Like I was not expecting that. Just from somebody who is in it's such a, a famous person. She's got so many followers on Instagram and this and that. Um, you'd think that, you know, it could have gotten to her head, but it hasn't. It has made her um, even more humble, I think, you know? So what a cool person. Yeah, because before this show, we really didn't get to hear her speaking voice, her points of view. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we read about it. We saw YouTube things like that, but it was never about the artist coming out to help out another artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it's very nice to see her in a different light. And I think that's kind of what she wanted, you know, why she's doing this is so people can see Ariana in a different way and not just the the pop star. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because she's a human. And that's ultimately what I feel like the the coolest thing about like this whole situation. Like I you in your head, you think like, you know, they're these superstars. Right. All Mm -hmm. four of these coaches. But. Um, once you're in front of them and you talk to them, you recognize that they are just people and they're, and they're nice people and they make you feel good and comfortable, all of them. So it's been, it's been a really cool experience. So in a really weird way with all four of them having the successes that they've had, do you, if you were to stand in front of the Beatles, would you treat them just as human? The Beatles? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I probably would. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, honestly, I feel like we all are human and like, you know, um, 
I feel like maybe even um, uh, I I can't speak to them, but I I can say most most artists probably just want to be treated like you know normal humans, right? Anyways, right? Right. So true. But I'll tell you what, I'm really inspired by you that you that you performed in a coffee shop and 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 I, you talk about up close and personal with 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 people that saw you live. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's hard. Um, that's actually harder for me singing in front of like small groups of people than in, in big groups. Um, it's, it's more intimate and it's a little bit more, yeah, it's so scary. You can see everybody's faces, what's going on, you know? <laughs> it's so funny you bring that up because I, I'm blessed with the opportunity to talk to the major stars of, of, of rock music and stuff like that. And that's the one thing they talk about as they, as they try to climb back up onto that tour bus again is that they're playing in venues, but there's not that many people showing up at the show. And so they, it helps them retrain the relationship between those that are there and the people up on stage. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean that's what it's all about, right? I mean, we're our music is touching people, and that's like I, that's personally what I think music is is for is to you know to touch people, and like you don't want to lose lose sight of the people that you're singing for, right? So well, I mean, don't don't you think that somewhere along the line, some senator somewhere has got to say, look, we've we've got to give all of these musicians uh, some sort of documentation that says they are doctors because music is a medicinal. <laughs> Right. I know it is medicinal in so many ways. How many people use it to to help them in, you know, good times and in bad times? I know that it's been there for me. So I feel you, man. I was going to ask you that. How do you use your own music as a medicinal? Yeah, um, honestly, I know things are really bad if I'm not listening to music. Yeah. If I'm like in a bad place, if I'm not listening to music, I'm like, okay, there's something wrong here. Um, and other than that, if there, if if I am listening to music, and you know, uh, it really, it's you know, as a medicinal. I mean, come on, any any, if I'm having a bad day, I'll put on like a a, a hyped up song or even a song if that's speaking to me with regards to what I'm going through, you know, it, it really just depends on the day. Um, but, um, you know, we all have our own little ways to make ourselves feel better. And music is definitely one of them for me. I know that there are listeners that are, that are, that are in their cars or in their rooms or offices and stuff like that, that have performed with choirs mm-hmm. and they've performed with bands and stuff, but you did something that a lot of people can't do. And that is you went out on your own. You, how did you break that level of shyness to be able to say, I got this? <laughs> you know, I like, I think it was just the, age just as time has gone on i'm more comfortable with who i am um and uh and so i think that's kind of one of the biggest things that has gone me through and my family you know like i getting on the on the big stage with all these you know, on the voice stage was not as nerve-wracking for me as i thought it was going to be not because it wasn't hard and it wasn't stressful and wasn't all these things, but I felt like, you know, if I'm out here, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to be away from my family, then there's no room for shyness. You know, um, I've just got to, I just got to let it go and give it all I've got. And honestly, that was one of the coolest experiences for me because I've never done that before for myself. And, um, I feel like, you know, it has, um, as each, each, performance goes on i'm getting more comfortable with myself on stage and as myself as a as a human you know yeah we all learn from these experiences so so true the uh, the loss of chris cornell inspired me to create the iheart radio channel creativity is an addiction when you're on yes. a major rush like you like you've got the voice right now as that mom how do you handle way up here and all of a sudden you you come down here to be normal again and a lot of people will call their normal a low and it's like no no you're not in a low you're you're back to being normal yeah, yeah, no, it was definitely, I mean, I can say when we came, when I came back from, you know, the audition process and stuff, um, the first time, it was, it's an adjustment, you know, you're in, you're in this world, you're in a totally, like, you're basically just inundated with, you know, music and doing all this stuff, and then you come back to your normal life, and um yeah, it was, it's different. Um, it was hard because my husband would be like, you're kind of being quiet at times. Ah, I'm like, yeah, right. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm not normally quiet. Like I'm a talker. I mean, it's just, it's, it is, it's in me. I've never not been a talker. I've gotten in trouble since I was a little kid. Um, and so he was like, what's happening to you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just adjusting back. You know, it just took some time to adjust back, but honestly, um, I'm very happy 
to be back with my family um, and to they're they're like what grounds me and what brings me back to my creativity to be honest like I feel like I'm the most creative when I can you know I have them around me yep. and it's it's been nice to be able to find find that again with them you know so speaking of finding where can people find you where they can give you lots of love <laughs> um, my my handles for both TikTok and Instagram are Katie underscore Ray three three three. I love it. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be of open course. for you. Thank you. I would love to. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> okay, you too, man. Have a good one.